Welcome to the underground, the Steel City Underground, a Pittsburgh Steelers podcast made by fans like you, for fans like you. Now, here's your host, Joe Kuzma. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Steel City Underground podcast. I am your host, Joe Kuzma, and I will be joined by a very special guest today, a first-time guest. And we're going to be talking about some of the injuries that are going on here in the Steelers training camp. Who's in, who's out for tonight's game against the Detroit Lions, the very first preseason game. Game number one played at Heinz Field tonight. And the first time we're going to get to see some of these guys in the black and gold uniforms this season. This preseason, very excited, very hyped. But talking about the preseason and predictions and something that myself and Eric Herman talked about the other day with the special teams predictions episode from last Wednesday, I noticed something in the game between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Philadelphia Eagles. And admittedly, I didn't watch the whole thing, but just the beginning. And it's something that I want all of you folks to check out tonight. The sky kick that myself and Eric were talking about, whether or not these coaches, these special teams coaches, would have their kickers attempt to kick it short as to not have a touchback start on the 25-yard line on kickoffs. Saw it in the very first two kicks right out the gate for the preseason. So very interesting. Keep your eye on that as this may be a strategy in order to pin teams further back might actually backfire for the intention of the rule but ladies and gentlemen at this time I'd like to welcome my guest to the Steel City Underground podcast a first time guest Mark Yeoman the co-owner of Steel City Blitz also otherwise known as Steel Dad on Twitter Steel Dad, Mark, how are you doing today? Uh, I'm fantastic, Joe. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's it's you know you're in the 21st century when you're more recognizable by your Twitter handle than your actual name. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah, and unfortunately, I'm always teasing about mine because Steel City Underground's a little too long to fit as an <laughs> official handle. So it's still it's like Steel Underger. It's missing the vowels. If it were um, one of these Wheel of Fortune questions, you wouldn't be able to buy much to figure it out. So um, we are here today to kind of, as silly as it sounds, we're previewing the first preseason game with the Steelers and the Lions being played at Heinz Field. We already know that some of the superstars will not be playing in this game. Uh, Ben Roethlisberger, Antonio Brown, Le'Veon Bell, and D'Angelo Williams, and of course Marquise Pouncey are all but confirmed by Coach Mike Tomlin as sitting out tomorrow. However, there are a number of young players and prospects that we are hopeful to see on the field for the first time in a Steelers uniform. We're going to discuss a few of those, but first, uh, the the first thing on the docket here is my feelings and your feelings, Mark, towards preseason scores and winners and losers. For me, I, I don't care what the actual outcome is. I just want to see these young men on the field. Uh, I would agree. I, look, there's a there's a, this tiny little chunk of me that is superstitious, and it goes back many, many, many years. I always want my Steelers to win at least one preseason game. I, I, I don't know why, and it doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things by any stretch. I just feel better when they do. You know, uh, <laughs> you, you know and, and I think, you know, it, it just is what it is. But, no, I agree with you 100%. I don't care what the score is, whether it's 3-2, to 300-2. to two, the, This is about looking at players, evaluating what you have, seeing who fits, who doesn't. You know, that's what this is all about. And, um, yeah, the, the winning and losing, no, not a big deal. Yeah, and I feel exactly the same way, except for I think there is that feeling in the pit of your stomach. I think it was actually the two Kiss Your Sister seasons with the 8-8 eight and eight 500 records yes. where they had terrible preseasons. I, did, I think they won one of, like, eight games or mm-hmm. something like that, and there was, like, just this really bad stretch coming off of – uh, I remember just it was ESPN or NFL Network or both probably, and every analyst that you pulled up, you had Warren Sapp calling the defense old and and geriatric, and they're just I don't know, yeah. it's like they put a curse on the season. So, uh, but we do have uh, we're away from all this old defense talk. We have young yeah. guys, but we don't know that we're going to see our first two draft picks tomorrow night. Uh, 
what is the current status of Artie Burns? Have you heard anything uh, as far as his availability? You think he'll get on the field tomorrow? I, I right now I'd be surprised. Um, you know, he he's really he's missed a lot of time. He's been banged up, um, and and so I I would think they'll probably uh, limit him. Now, when I say limit, maybe he does some special team stuff. I don't know that we'll see him uh, on defense at all. And then, you know, Sean Davis is, is kind of up in the air because I think the last any of us heard uh, is that he was kind of hobbling around at the end of the joint practice with Detroit yesterday with a pretty big ice pack on one of his knees. Um, and, of course, today's practice is closed. There's no open practice today. So we're going to have to rely on uh, any of the media types that are allowed in there and, and see what's going on with him. So it, it, it's possible we might not see either of those guys, uh, Joe. Yeah, you know, that's such a, that is a shame. Uh, I heard the same news about Sean Davis was, I guess, he left the practice field, came back, like you said, with a big ice bag on his knee and was standing with uh, Carnell Lake just the same way he would be. Uh, when he's not in specific drills. So he was still out there and intent focused. And I'll tell you, I was really geeked up. I I really wanted to see him play because I was excited when they made this pick in the second round this year. But picks one and two are probably off the docket for tomorrow. Pick number three, the small college guy from South Carolina State, Javon Hargrave. That is one man I am interested in seeing on the field. I would love – wouldn't it be something great to see him get out there with some of these second and third team players in the preseason and just dominate? I mean, that, I think that would give everyone a really good feeling considering all of the, I don't know, kind of bad news that's kind of circulating this dark cloud that's over St. Vincent College right now. Man, I couldn't agree more. I I really liked Hargrave um, coming out. I – you know, there's all that talk that whenever you have a small school guy who dominates that way, the, the talk always turns to, well, his competition is, is not good and this is why he's dominating. And, you know, I, I see the point in that, but I also see the fact that you have a guy that has tremendous talent and, you know, uh, let him come to the NFL and see what he can do. And so far in camp and, and in these little drills and stuff with the lions he's done nothing to make us think that he can't be a player in the nfl um when they're going to those four-man fronts he's shooting the gaps he's creating problems for for really all of the offensive linemen that he's been up against so far so i I, you know as we get towards talking about some of these guys he's definitely at the top of my list as somebody that i want to watch tomorrow night yeah, absolutely, and that kind of goes right uh, right into the meat of the discussion for today's show, uh, talking about the each player that we want to see, and I was going to go through each personnel group here, and since we already mm-hmm. had the defensive lineman, I think we both are in agreement, Javon Hargrave, if there was maybe one other uh, gentleman that I'd like to see play tomorrow night, that's Big Dan McCullers. So I said tomorrow night, of course, you're probably listening to this uh, on Friday morning, most of you anyways, Mm -hmm. as a preview for the game. But anyway, uh, Big Dan, uh, curious to see what he does as well, if he's made any type of progress. Of course, Hargrave looking to possibly supplant him as maybe that nose tackle or defensive tackle player in certain personnel um, sub packages and whatnot. So running from the defensive line there, I'm going to jump into the offense real quick. We have Mm -hmm. some receivers, quite a few wide receivers that I'm sure we all want to see play tomorrow night. I don't know if we have enough time in the show to go over all the guys we want to see, but let's pick out a few names. Uh, Mark, go ahead. You could beat me to the punch since I got Hargrave in first. Well, I I mean, for me, it's going to start with Eli Rogers. Um, He was a kid that that I really liked coming out of Louisville last year. very quick you know if you watch any of his tape when he was at louisville i mean the kid was just built to be in the slot he runs the skinny post really well he do, he, he's very quick not overly fast um but but just looks like the type of guy that's supposed to be there and so far the reviews he got hurt last year that's why he wasn't around but um reviews have been great so far this year um i i think ed bouchette of the post gazette has already basically said yeah i'll be shocked if this guy isn't starting in the slot week one um so so he's he's the one guy of the receivers that i'm uh really looking forward to seeing tomorrow 
Yeah, I heard the same from Ed. It's funny you brought his name up because I was going to mention the same thing. Not only was he asked if Rodgers would make the team, he thinks he's going to be a, yeah. a significant impact player, which is crazy to think about with all of the different uh, speed and bodies you have out there. A lot of hype on Sammy Coates right now, yep. who entering his second year, of course, he could take that leap. It's another training camp. This isn't all new to him. He's in shape. I mean, it's it, from everything that's been told, this kid has... Has all of the tools, and of course, he drew comparisons to Martavis Bryant just coming out of college mm-hmm. to begin with. Not even the link with the Steelers selecting him in the third round last season. So, uh, there, of course, I've been very high on Darius Hayward Bay, but we've seen enough of Darius Hayward Bay that I don't have to get too excited about seeing him play tomorrow. Even though he'll probably see, he'll see his fair share of uh, playing time, I would think, since he's somewhere as uh, mm-hmm. on the depth chart as third or fourth wide receiver. Uh, they gotta, just got to get some of these guys playing time. And, of course, in with the receivers, the tight ends. Uh, Jesse James, who had a pretty miserable preseason last year, <laughs> seemed to take uh, extraordinary steps as the season progressed last year, especially the second half of the season. He saw some playing time. Uh, he had that touchdown against the Raiders. I'm definitely looking forward to the outlaw, and I'll have a, a – short little one of those vine clips up with him throughout the day as well so you'll want to check that out and then uh, of course I'm sure you're going to mention Xavier Grimble and <laughs> this was this was the guy when I had the round table with Jeff Hartman and Neil Kulong last week we were talking about him being the Isaac Redman award winner as the guy with the most hype coming out of training camp so uh, any any thoughts on either the outlaw? Oh, and trust me, I'm going to get to that soon too with the outlaw, and then of course Javon Hargrave is the grave digger. But we'll talk about nicknames in a second. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, I, I think both uh, Jeff and Neil are are right on um, everything <laughs> that I've seen and and heard of Grimble. He he is kind of the Doctor Jekyll, Mister Hyde. I mean, it's like. Uh, one day in camp, he's just spectacular, and then the next day, his he, he suddenly lost how to play football. Um, so yeah, I, I I'm hopeful. I like the kid. He's got good size. Uh, I mean, when you look at at their tight ends, I mean, I, I think James will take a big step this year, but I'm still concerned about his ability to block in line um, and and just over his overall strength on the edge there. So, you know, is Grimble a guy that they, they bring in there or do we revert back to David Johnson? Um, you know, so yeah, I mean, I'm excited about him, but at the same time, yeah, he's given me a little pause for, for celebration just yet. Yeah. And speaking of the tight end groups, one gentleman that has been a big topic of discussion as of just the last few hours, Ladarius Mm -hmm. Green, we know he hasn't even been able to get on the on the actual practice field. He's been on another field just kind of trying to run, trying to cut on that surgically repaired ankle, whatever that was that he had that I was told it was a minor procedure. But now we're hearing all sorts of different things in regards to headaches and, uh, you know, concussion history. And maybe even we've even heard it go as far as he's considering retirement. What is going on here? This is I, if it's I, I came and talk. I am actually speechless. This has me very <laughs> worried for the outcome of the 2016 season. I mean, you lose Martavis Bryant and you're like, well, that's OK. Heath Miller retires. Hey, that's OK. And now all of a sudden we're going to be down yet another guy. We still don't know what's going on with Le'Veon Bell. Uh, any Anything you can offer on the Ladarius Green situation right now? Here's what I have been told and what I know is that um, it, it is legitimate what's going on. Um, not just about the ankle, but, but about the head issues. He did have some concussions at San Diego that forced him to miss some games. Um, and apparently he is struggling with these persistent headaches that, that just, as any of us can imagine, it's got to be tough to deal with. Um, now, whether or not the Steelers knew about these when they signed them, I, I don't know. I think that's all going to come out eventually. Um, w- what I can tell you, as I said, Joe, it's all legitimate. Um, pro football talk had it, a um, couple of people I've talked to and, and really what it boils down to. And I, I was talking to some of my guys about this a little while ago. We can't seem to find anything that, that contradicts what is out there. Um, so that just leads you to a whole other discussion about, well, geez, if he retires, how does that impact the Steelers? Uh, if they cut him, what about his signing bonus? I mean, now we're getting into all this other stuff. So, 
it, it, this would be a tremendous loss to to lose the ability that he was going to uh, bring to the table um, on offense. So I, I guess right now the best we can do is is wait until we get a definitive word from from either uh, Green uh, or, or the Steelers. Yeah, and of course, as unfortunate as all this sounds and as fans were maybe being a little greedy, I do want to mm-hmm. see – anything done in the best interest of Ladarius Green, his health, and his family. We've seen more than enough. Well, we're seeing players walk away at at younger ages now. They've already kind of made their money. They're asking themselves, is this worth it? I know that, like, you know, your documentaries or even a film like Concussion is Mm -hmm. definitely in the back of the mind of some of these guys. You watched Megatron walk away from the game uh, just this past off season, and it, there's countless others. What was it? Um, the guy from the Jets. Uh, man, his name's escaping me. Uh, but he played in like every game and all or all but one game, and mm-hmm. he just walks away. They they were asking him for a pay cut in order to re-sign uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick, and instead of even taking a pay cut, he just just walked away from the game entirely. <laughs> it's just it's wild to even think about that. And that kind of transitions to uh, this isn't the sexiest thing to maybe watch in the preseason, but I did enjoy watching the offensive lineman last year. I yeah. did enjoy watching Alejandro Villanueva, and he didn't disappoint during the regular season for the most part either. He has a little bit of competition there. I don't know if there's really anybody that stands out that I'm looking forward to seeing play against the Lions. How about you, Mark? Well, offensive line-wise, and and I don't know what his status is, uh, you know, the fourth-round pick out of LSU, Gerald Hawkins, um, who I'll I'll go on record, I didn't really care for. I I didn't really see the logic in the pick, and I I saw a guy that that committed a lot of uh, holding penalties and other things, and um, everything I have been told from from our people that are there watching camp and stuff is that he's having a really good camp. Mike Munchak has kind of messed with his stance a little bit, and and he he's just looking really really good. And he did ding his shoulder up this week, but I think it was just a stinger, and and I think he's going to go. So he's the guy that I really want to watch uh, uh, tomorrow on the offensive line. Yeah, and just to kind of bring this up, too, and I've got the actual quote from Mike Tomlin. Uh, we did mention the players that he didn't plan on playing, but mm-hmm. Tomlin went on uh, record to say, I am not going to officially declare anyone out. I like to leave the door open, particularly for those that are nursing minor injuries. Right. So he did say there is a reasonable uh, that – Maybe Marcus Wheaton, Artie Burns, uh, Travis Feeney, who was the sixth-round draft choice out of Washington, and then defensive tackle Roy Fallon will not play because of lack of time on the field due to their injuries. So those guys are already ruled out. We didn't mention Wheaton with the receiver group, but might as well just knock them all out. Burns we've mentioned multiple times. Uh, Feeney is someone that I did. I I wanted to see what he might be able to do. And then, as we said, off the air, I'm not sure how much longer Roy. Roy might not be around past (laughs) game number two if he doesn't have a chance to even show case what it what he's able to do when he's healthy let alone injured so uh of course those are the offensive linemen for the running backs i mean we've got we don't have a we have slim pickings here because we already know <laughs> we know bell's going to be sitting we know d'angelo williams is going to be sitting i wrote an article the other day on steelcityunderground.com about all of the players i had about six or seven names of guys that i just don't want to see in the preseason and most of those guys were already named like ben yeah, bell yeah. williams pouncey i said shazier too because it seems like he's made of glass or that's at least a knock on him <laughs> anyways thus far doesn't it seem that way though with a lot of steelers players i mean manny sanders took like three years to get on the field marcus wheaton was banged up in his rookie season too uh these guys it, it always seems like something jarvis jones is always hurt it always seems like someone or something i wish this team could stay healthy so on the running back side we have Fitzgerald Toussaint who I think will probably be the number three and then of course Daryl Richardson uh, who had not played football since what was it 2013 he was a former Rams draft pick in the seventh round in 2012 this is fourth NFL roster I imagine he'll probably those two will probably split the most of the carries and then uh, we have somebody with a crazy nickname. I'm going to get into some of these nicknames that Mike Tomlin was talking about. Uh, the quarterbacks, of course. Um, well, quarterbacks always fun. Uh, do we think Dustin Vaughn even sees any reps? I kind of doubt it. 
I I think he might um, because I think Tomlin and Haley have to be careful not to get their their two primary backups dinged up. Um, you, you know, Gradkowski. Uh, speaking of glass, he's he, I don't think he's thrown a pass since like the Carter administration uh, <laughs> in the regular season. Uh, you know, and, and certainly Landry, I think, is going to be your number two guy. And, and while you want him to get reps and stuff, you, you don't want him killed either. So uh, I, I think we'll see a little bit of Vaughn. Um, how much? That depends. Did we have an official starter named for tomorrow by any chance or for this Lions game? Uh, if we do, I haven't seen it. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if it was Gradkowski, to be honest with you, but I, I have not seen it. Yeah, I hadn't seen it either. I mean, there's other teams that have been naming like their starters either for the yeah. season or the preseason games. Case Keenum was mentioned with the Rams as mm-hmm. being the starter. But, yeah, that kind of escaped me too. And uh, I, I posted like the Steelers had some little vine with all the quarterbacks walking out at St. Vincent, and somebody said uh, the other they were like one good guy or one of those guys is a bum. I said, how dare you call Big Ben a bum? bum uh and i knew who they were talking about a lot of people are always throwing like the vegetables and everything at landry jones and i said what do you expect from this guy i'm always defending him i'm not going to beat the dead horse here but (laughs) preseason reps last year certainly helped him especially that extra game and with bruce's injury we saw how that definitely affected him during the regular season he was ready to step in there and run the offense so uh, yeah. I, I just don't know about Dustin Vaughn. I mean, we're always excited about these guys who come in, but it seems like every one of them that comes in, whether it's like Brendan Kay or uh, was it the Clemson quarterback? Oh, geez, I can't. Taj Boyd. Taj Boyd. Yeah. I mean, even Tyler Murphy threw a pass over Taj Boyd last year. So it just kind of <laughs> tells you where the Steelers are. And they had five games to play. And it tells you where they are in regard to allowing these like guys that are aren't going to make the roster even throw a pass. I think they just want them to work with the quarterbacks they have and realizing that these backups don't get enough reps in the regular season. Uh, God willing, I don't want to say that they will Mm -hmm. see any time, but we had a nice long stretch there where Ben wasn't getting banged up, and then last year we had some bad luck. So I don't know. Yeah, I I mean, you know, the the way the the CBA is now, I mean, there's there's so – they're so limited in the amount of reps they can get in practice. And, and I think a lot of fans don't understand that, um, you know, and I think Dallas is kind of a perfect situation, you know, Romo goes down and, and a lot of those fans are just screaming, you know, like, man, our our team is still so good. Why can't we just get, you know, some quarterback play? And it's like, you know, these guys just don't get much action. And, and if they're not, you know, experienced and ready to go, then, they're in real trouble. And, uh, you know, so that's why it's such a fine line with how much time you get them in the preseason. Yeah, the only team that really had any luck with backups, I won't even say they necessarily had luck, but they made the playoffs with uh, just like the Steelers having like four different guys back there throughout the season was the Texans. Yeah. And that was just a tumultuous situation. I think they really pulled through with defense more than anything. And that's exactly it. I mean, you have you have a guy who was essentially the number four last year is Landry Jones because they bring Vic in after Gradkowski is officially mm-hmm. uh, out for the season, placed on IR. And then Michael Vick wasn't quite ready either, and we saw how the team struggled. So I think we have to feel fortunate in that we're able to win no matter what with two and two, basically, with the backup QBs. So mm-hmm. um could move over to the linebacker core where we could pick a lot of names off of this list. Yeah. Go ahead. Who's your favorite one you want to see tomorrow? Oh man. Uh, I, I'm torn. I think uh, I'm really excited to see Anthony Chiquillo. Um, and at the same time, I'm kind of uh, excited to see dirty red. There's another nickname for you. Um, Tyler Matakevich, uh, uh, who had a spectacular night uh, at the Friday scrimmage recently. You know, both of those guys are having good camps. Um, the the superlatives about Chiquillo, man. I mean, the, the dude is just playing out of his mind, and um, I, I mean, he's drawing great reviews even from some of the Lions media folks I, I've read. Um, so I, I would say he's the guy I really want to see go tomorrow night. I am in total agreement with you on that since Feeney's already out. Um, I mean, Chiquillo's a guy that I would like to see as well. But, yeah, Dirty Red, the crazy nicknames, (laughs) uh, just (laughs) – (laughs) <laughs> this is funny. I was just talking. I, that's the only guy I really talked about 
uh, the other day because I didn't want to give away too much information and have nothing to speak about with this particular show and with you joining me here. Once again, Mark Yulman from uh, Steel City Blitz, also known as Steel Dad. And now we have, well, we have two more personnel groups, really. We have the defensive backs and then we have the specialists. And I'll jump to the specialists real quick mm-hmm. because I just, I, I love talking about the kickers and punters. We did a whole show on special teams the other day with Eric Herman, who I said was my 1A, but he's been a little busy this week and hasn't been able to jump in. I was hoping to have him here and do a roundtable with you, mm-hmm. Mark. But uh, Will Monday's in camp, and a lot of people think that he may be able to compete with Jordan Berry. I don't know. I think this is Jordan Berry's job to lose personally as far as the, the punters, and we don't have anybody competing as far as a kicker with Chris Boswell. Uh, and Greg Warren, I think there was someone, was it Dooley, that was yes. the other long yep. snapper? Uh, and I said, man, unless Greg decides to hang it up for some reason, uh, I mean, Dooley's pretty much a camp body as well, as much as I hate saying those words. <laughs> uh, but just jumping into the, into the defensive backs, a lot of I've been given a lot of praise over. I want to see what Ray Vinopal's capable of doing, the former uh, Pitt standout. He's a safety. The team definitely has a need at that position. I, I mean, I, I always thought he was a long shot. And now I'm starting to think maybe he's not as much of a long shot as originally thought. Well, you, you know, it, it's interesting when you look at that secondary and, you know, l- let's assume uh, positively here that, that Sean Davis is fine. I mean, we know we know that we're without Senquez Golson. Um, so you're, you're looking at Mike Mitchell. You're looking at Rob Golden. You're looking at William Gay and then and then Ross Cockrell. So, you know, where will the Steelers go here in terms of do do they keep a fifth safety? Do they do they lean heavier on the corners? I mean, you, you're looking at the potential of of and you mentioned Ray Vinopol. You're looking at the potential of having a real inexperienced group of guys maybe to draw from. Um, you know, Doran Grant drafted last year. He, he's listed as a second team corner right now but um been very quiet with him he's a guy i'm looking forward to watching um tomorrow night so it, the secondary is is really fluid right now other than say you know your your two starting corners and and mike mitchell i mean there's a lot of movement going on there and you know the way that nfl offenses are now i mean really you're starting almost with five dbs on the field so uh you have to assume sean davis is that guy covering the slot so you know who who fills in back behind those guys yeah, we were discussing that as well. Even uh, the circumstance that where Shamarco Thomas is still retained on the field mm-hmm. just for maybe his knowledge and experience of playing in this system where necessarily maybe in a different situation, uh, we were originally thinking he could be a, a roster uh, bubble type guy. And you know what? I definitely am looking forward to seeing if he has any improvement because last preseason he was pretty much penciled in as the starter and it was just a nightmare yeah. Uh, for him, and he just kind of fell off the charts there. And it, I think it also depends on how well these safeties play in game one and maybe even game two as to whether or not they break the emergency glass and uh, and bring Will Allen in for another look, uh, maybe as veteran depth, that name's getting thrown around a lot. Yep. Not out of the realm of possibilities, uh, Joe. Yeah, absolutely. And, well, we we mentioned some of the nicknames, and the one running back I was thinking of was Brandon Brown Dukes. I didn't want to misquote his name because I knew he had one of those hyphenated names. <laughs> right. And he's been called Mercyhurst and Bill Biv DeVoe. So, <laughs> and, yeah, it was uh, it, it, exactly the 90s R&B group. So <laughs> it was because his initials are BBD, and they are asking Mike Tomlin about these nicknames and how he comes up with them. you got Dirty Red. you got the Grave Digger, Javon Hargraves. you got – Hargrave, I I keep trying not to say that as opposed to the the kid who got drafted, uh, the corner. Yeah. And uh, uh, you you also have like Juice, and you have a few other really cool nicknames like that. So I wanted to end the show by asking, how did you come up with Steel Dad? Uh, Well, it's really not as uh, exciting or glamorous as you might think. Uh, uh, Just just my lifelong passion has has of course been the Steelers, so that's where the steel comes from, and. And the fact I've got uh, a 16-year-old daughter and a soon-to-be 12-year-old son, so 
dad is the other important part of my life. Of course, my wife would hopefully agree with that. Um, and that's that's where Steel Dad came from. So it's just it's been with me ever since. Yeah, that's that's very cool. I don't have any cool nicknames like that, at least not yet. But uh, I'm usually the nickname guy when I was always hanging around our little trial um, by fire initiations with uh, talked about being a a referee Mm -hmm. in a different sport. And when we would go on these tournaments and that I was always the guy coming up with theme songs and nicknames. So uh, when I read this with Tom and I was just chuckling, I said, that's the job I want. I want to come up with everyone's (laughs) nicknames, but, uh, but for now, steel dad definitely works. Uh, You could follow steel dad, Mark Yulman at Steel Dad, nothing fancy, no underscores, no dashes, no hyphens, nothing. I can't screw that one up for a change. And, of course, he and his team are busy over at SteelCityBlitz.com. Mark, thank you for coming on the show once again and giving us your thoughts. Hey, my pleasure, Joe, and uh, we'll definitely return the favor and get you on the uh, the Steel City Blitz podcast here uh, as the season gets rolling as well. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely, and it was a pleasure, and I look forward to joining you over there as well. Yeah, sounds good, man. We'll, uh, we're, we're getting it up and running. We're doing them weekly again, and uh, uh, just, just a matter of time, and, and hopefully we'll be talking about some real positive Steelers news. There you have it, folks. A very good conversation with my good friend, Steel Dad from Steel City Blitz. And I have an addendum here after we recorded, and I wanted to add this into the broadcast here because the news that came out from Mark Caballi from the Trib, he tweeted some, well, he says here, found tape from Ladarius Green from March when the couple of us interviewed him. The full context of our back and forth, Caballi is asking what happened with the concussion you had with the Chargers last year and Green answers. It came out as a concussion, but I just had sinus problems, so it wasn't a concussion. And Kabali asked, so you came back the next week? Green says, yeah, so I was good. How many concussions was it last year? It was the same thing. Sinuses. They didn't know about it. It's fine now. And he says it wasn't anything that held me back or anything. So, To be continued, folks, the story continues to get more interesting. The plot thickens. We will see what happens with the Steelers' most prized free agent pickup from the 2016 offseason. We're going to see what exactly is going to happen. This is just a, a very bizarre situation with just news and rumors and speculation all over the board. But we've already beaten that dead horse to death many times over so i would just like to leave you with the steel city underground hotline phone number if you have any questions anything that pops into your brain as you're watching the preseason game against the lions tonight feel free to call in 203-900-4scu just so you know this is this is a phone number you call into and just leave a message and just tell us who you are where you're calling from and what you would like us to cover on the show and you just never know myself Maybe one of my guests, like Steel Dad, will be on, and we will answer your question. We'll play it live on the air. But until then, enjoy some football, folks. We'll be back more than likely on Monday with a recap from tonight's preseason football game. Until then, be safe, be good, and I will catch you later. We would like to thank you for listening and remind our listeners to follow us on social media and our website www.steelcityunderground.com